Welcome to Victoria University's Graduate Online Information Series. Tonight we're going to discuss the benefits of studying graduate programs in sports science. I'm Dr Andre Nelson, Senior Lecturer in Clinical Exercise. With me tonight is Fabio Serpiello. Fabio is a Senior Lecturer in Sport Physiology and he's the Chair of the Master of Sports Science Football Performance. Fabio has also previously held the position of Head of Academy Sports Science at Melbourne Victory Football Club. Welcome Fabio. Thank you Andre. I might start with a question, Fabio. Uh, in the title of your program, are we referring to football or soccer? We do get that question uh, quite often. Uh, we refer to all football codes. Um, I personally like soccer, but we do, we do have an interest in all football codes. And, and we are very lucky here in uh, Victoria that we have representation of all football codes at a very high level. Yes, I'm, as a Kiwi, I'm glad we've got rugby uh, and rugby league here in Melbourne as well. We do. Not just AFL. How do you think sports science professionals in the industry will innovate in the post-COVID era? Look, um, sport is always a good vehicle for innovation. I think um, education will play a big part in uh, the upskilling of the professional. We, we will see uh, many working in the, in the sport in industry wanting to upskill. We will see... Uh, coaches having to cover more than one role and so I think there will be um, education will be the main vehicle for inno innovation post-COVID. Sure. What aspects do you love teaching about sports science? Look uh, sport is our passion so it's got a very practical aspect to it so it's uh, never b boring and so that's a that's a good part. Uh, I think one of the best things is that our connection with the, with the partnerships uh, allow us to have a network of interesting people, travel. So these are all great part of our jobs. If I follow up on those partnerships, can you tell me some of the partnerships that are associated with your, with your course? Yeah, look, this is a, a distinctive aspect of our course. Um, obviously, we have uh, some flagship partnerships with the Western Bulldog F F Football Club and uh, with Melbourne Victory. And these, uh, th th these partnerships are very important because they allow our students to grow their network um, they can go on internships, uh, we can have their staff as part of our faculty. Um, and also we have a, an exciting partnership with Real Madrid Graduate School, uh, which allows us to take our master's students on a study tour every year, uh, where they can, they can learn directly from Real Madrid Football Club staff, which is exciting. Tell me more about that trip, because that's obviously a real uh, flagship and, and sort of a central thing in the course, that experience for students. Yeah, look, it, it is a great experience. Uh, our students tell us so. Uh, our staff obviously have a good time because Spain is a good, is a good place to be in, in summer. Um, the study tour is really de designed for our students to access uh, staff that otherwise they, they, they wouldn't. And so we can get some behind the scenes story from some outstanding people in a Real Madrid Football Club, but also um, we have invited guests from other places. This year we had a pr professor from uh, P Portugal and one person from Aspire Academy in Qatar. Obviously, Spain is a great country, so this, it's also a personal experience for the students. Mm. They can experience Europe and they can have some social life, which doesn't hurt. Oh, absolutely. Um, certainly an amazing experience for them going on that trip as part of the course. Um, what makes our university stand out from others in this particular area and, and the course that you have? Look, I think we have a great tradition in sports science. We have uh, teachers and re researchers who have worked at the, at the forefront of sports science for many, many years. Um, so the content that our, our students get is unique um, and mix that with our unique portfolio of partnerships. Uh, I think those two are, are the distinctive uh, aspects of, of our course. You know, I think I like the fact that the placements uh, or the, the partnerships that you have, um, you know, you get that experience from real world practitioners as well who are right in there um, deep with in sport for, and that experience for students is amazing. Yeah. And th that's exactly what our students t t tell us, yes. especially students who maybe in their, in their undergraduate were not exposed to, uh, to that. Our own undergraduates are maybe lucky in a sense that we do have some of the in our undergraduate but people that come from inter interstate or other universities or overseas, they're actually quite amazed at the, at the level of uh, practical exposure that they get. How big is the step up from undergraduate to master's level from, from an academic perspective and you know, the, the requirements on the student? 
Look, I'd, I'd like to think that it's significant because you know it, it's a graduate pr program. Um, I think it's not just the academic step up, it's the way that the students organize their study life. Um, they might go from a predominant face-to-face -face studying to a heavy online co component. So we, we, we do um, spend some time explaining to them how they have to adjust their study life and how to have to organize their own time. Um, it's, a, it's also a step up from a, you know, the amount of hours they have to spend on the content because you know, it might be that they still do three hours a week or nine hours a week, whatever it is, but then it's what comes after, the reading, uh, the, their own uh, personal study. So I, I think it is, it is a s significant step up and so it should be, I th I'll say. Yeah, and so it sounds like there's that element of independent study, ind independent inquiry by the students. It's probably a good time to ask you about the structure of the course, yeah. some of the aspects of what the students study and actually do. Yeah. So the, the course is uh, delivered over three semesters. Um, we have the, f the first two semesters are where the, the majority of the coursework ha happens. Uh, all of our units are blended l learning focused, so some of them are fully online, some of them have uh, burst mode face-to-face -face component, which is great for uh, everyone, professionals who have you know, a busy schedule, uh, but also undergrads that may not have ex experienced that. Um, then the, the last semester is where our students need to choose between uh, a thesis option, uh, an applied research project option, or an internship. And we also have the choice of an elective. Um, so the, the course is structured in a way that it is a real blended learning experience. Uh, it touches on face-to-face, -face, online, personal uh, study. And um, we also have a graduate cer cer certificate uh, as, a, as an exit qualification, uh, which is a graduate certificate in sports science. And we have a graduate certificate in uh, performance analysis, uh, which is both an entry as an e and an exit point. So for instance, with those, um, those other exit points, let's say you're a student who got a full-time job working in sport and you weren't actually able to finish the course, you could take one of those exit points. Absolutely. Early. So after the first semester, yeah. if you complete all the, four, the first four units and that's enough for you, you can exit with a with a qualification, which and is you great. Can, you can come back and upskill that? Yes, you can come back and you will start straight from the second semester. Fantastic, right. that's great. Um, how does VU support work-life balance when studying in a graduate program like this? I think the first level of support is the structure of the course. Um, because we have online units and blended learning units, it allows you to access the content when you want and how you, you want it on any device. Uh, that I think is the, the first le level of support. Then it's about staff. Uh, we, uh, we are generally very approachable, uh, which is, is great. If you have a question, uh, you know, uh, after hours, we, we are there for, for the students. And then obviously the university as a whole has a, uh, a big layer of uh, support, um, you know, accessing the library uh, w whenever you want. Those are all things that make up for a, a good support net network. Mm. Yeah. Why work in this field? Um, what are the benefits, both professionally, practically, and personally, for for students who graduate from the program? Yeah. Why work in the field? That's the question that I got from my parents when I finished uh, high school. Because there is a there is the concept of sport as a you know leisure and not maybe uh, sure. a real yeah. job. But this is the country that has demonstrated that uh, there are careers in in, in sport. Uh, the main reason to get into this is because it's it's, it's a passion. You know, and it's, it's a great um, environment to be in. Um, we, you know, it, it, you can achieve a lot personally. It allows you to travel. It allows you to be exposed to um, uh, a lot of uh, networks. Um, I think there should be no questions about, you know, why sport. It is, it is a great way to, to enhance your own uh, skills. Uh, and we have great examples of students who came in from even uh, vocational e education. They went through our undergraduate, they jumped into our masters, and now they're working in fantastic places around the, the world. Do you, do you want to give us a few yeah. of those examples of some of the students who've come through the course? Absolutely, look, very re recently we, we've had uh, one of our graduates uh, is now the head of sports science for Yokohama FC Marinos, who won the Japanese uh, league. Uh, we're talking about soccer now. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's there. Um, we have 
uh, one of our students, Robert Leguin, he is an assistant SNC coach at Manchester City Football Club. Wow. We have um, students who are head of performance in AFL or VFL uh, cl clubs. Um, we have uh, one student that I can think of who uh, she's working as a freelance analyst uh, in AFL. So we really have some students who have achieved uh, greatly, both academically, but also they are in top clubs around the world. Yeah, no, uh, across a range of sports. Exactly. Too. So it, yeah. I guess it shows that it really is the football um, in the title and not yeah. just soccer. And we have a performance analyst with the Melbourne Rebels that you should be very Yeah, yeah absolutely. How, how are our graduate programs viewed by industry? Look, I think they are viewed positively, especially because of the practical com component. Um, we don't have official surveys about this, but mm. the, the anecdotal evidence from the club, the, the clubs, is that our graduates always can hit the ground running. And that's exactly what they're looking for, because typically sport, sporting clubs are time poor. They want someone that can come in, uh, be directed to a task, and then just you know fly and, and go with it. And so we, we think we hit the mark quite well on that. I guess an expectation from sports teams is that students will, will have the skills to be able to acquire what they need on the job. Would, that, would I be correct in, in yep, saying that? Yep, and they do. Um, yeah. they, ov obviously, there's no substitute of learning on the, on the job. But because our, our courses expose them to a lot of practical c component, a lot of um, exper experiences from guests that actually work mm. you know, at the coalface, they get that. They get that even so effectively, that's work. integrated into the program itself. Yeah, absolutely, fantastic. Um, what professional and personal supports can students expect when studying this graduate program? Look, uh, apart from what, what we provide as staff, uh, in, in terms of you know understanding um, that they, that there's a need to be flexible in the way they they learn, uh, providing extra extra material in terms of pre preparing before the unit. Uh, the university has a, a great network of support um, in terms of numeracy, literacy, uh, personal support, uh, in terms of you know, uh, problems that you, you, the students may, may go through with their families. Th there's always a very good, um, uh, you know, where we pay a, lo a lot of attention to their needs when there's special co considerations for, for personal matters. Uh, and the students can check this out on the we website. We have an area that e explains all this. Yeah. Awesome. Um, will this course allow students to create an industry network once they graduate? Look, we, we like to think so. Uh, one of the things that, that we always say, or that I always e explain to my students, a, a graduate program never gives you a job, you know, 100%. You know, this is not a, di a discipline where you get a job straight after uh, graduation. What it gives you, is the possibility to create a network in the industry. And that's very important in sport because when you go for a, for a job, if you've created a network, it, it's always an advantage. And so this is true for professional network as you know, pro professionals working already in this industry, but also a network of students that go through the program uh, with, with you. So effectively their peers who are the practitioners of the future are you know, an immediate network that they have. That, that's exactly right, and yeah. and we have examples of network. They grow t together, and years later, they may end up working in the same club. Yeah. In terms of the course itself, can you <coughs> can you give us an insight into some of the specific units of study that students might do, and what benefits and skills the students get out of those units? Uh, look, we have um, some um, units that are very pr pr practical. For, for example, I teach a unit which is about monitoring workload in in in, in athletes. They get hands-on experience on you know, GPS and heart rate mo mo monitoring. We have units uh, that are a bit more you know, left field in the sense of you know, the, the, the true sports science applications. Uh, for, for example, sport integrity and, e and ethics, which is, is very important. Yeah, huge. Um, and then we have uh, internships where they can learn on the job. So tell us a bit more about those internships. <laughs> what, what sort of things do they experience um, what types of roles are they engaging in as interns? Um, we like to think that our internship are something different because we, we try to talk to the clubs and give the, the students really uh, you know, e exposure and in the independence on, on the job. It's almost like a mini job and, and that's how we like to run them. 
Awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, <coughs> yeah, and going back to what you were saying before with um, you know, your own unit, uh, measuring workload, very topical at this point in time as well. If very. Um, people are in the Twitter sphere and watching things going back and forth. I'm not going to go there. I won't either. <laughs> what can professionals expect to encounter in the industry in the next five years? I mean, that's a, a big question for you. Yeah. It's hard to forecast what's happening. Obviously, we, we've seen quick changes in the sporting in, the, in industry. Um, I think they can expect uh, a lot of opportunities, if I can be honest. In these times of you know, change and crisis almost, uh, people focus on the negatives, but it's always a good time uh, to increase your personal skills. And I think that they will find opportunities for people who are passionate, who can push the, the, the envelope a little bit, and they can approach clubs and show that they can do more than one thing. I think that's, that's what's going to happen. So adding value, um, you know, how, how they can add value to sports teams yeah. and actually being able to sell themselves. That's always important. And that's, uh, I think it comes with the confidence that the students um, acquire during the course. In fact, one of the reasons why I think uh, graduate programs are, are, are good is that some people have got the knowledge, but they don't have the confidence to go in the industry. And coming into a master's de degree or, or a grad cert, it, it's really good because you share you know, life experience with others. You get exposed to uh, you know, professionals like us. And also you go on an internship, so you come out a more rounded professional. Yeah, that exposure is certainly a key element of it. And yeah. um, I guess students would have to get outside their comfort zone at times um, to enable that to happen, right? Exactly, that's what happens with us. You know, yes. it's, it, it's an important um, phase of their, their learning and we definitely push them. Are there particular innovations that you see appearing in sport science that, that um, are also appearing in the course? Like how cutting edge are you getting with things and technology is certainly a huge one, right? Technology, data anal analytics are always, you know, those, uh, those areas that VU has always been at the forefront of. Uh, we have great expertise in technology, uh, especially wearable technology. Uh, we have great expertise in analytics. So that content filters from our research into our teaching almost, you know, on a daily basis. Um, but also there is all, all the soft skill part, which is cutting edge as well, because clubs tell us that sometimes what they're missing in, in other you know, students or other courses is the ability to explain things to practitioners, the ability to communicate things uh, pr properly. So I think the balance between being uh, cutting edge with the, you know, t technology and data and actually being able to work with people, that's what will, ma will, will make them good, good professionals. Yeah, absolutely. You get these huge volumes of data and it's about making that interpretable to the other people you work with. Obviously, they're going to be working in interprofessional practice yep. effectively, right? Yep. So, Correct. you know, that communication you spoke about is um, quite critical as well. Um, in terms of, I guess, you know, some of the technology they're working with in the course, they're obviously going to be using tech as part of the units of study that they're doing. What are some of the things that they might be working with in, for instance, the labs? Yeah, look, we, we get access to amazing facilities here. Mm. Um, but this course is really focusing on the technology that is used out in the field. So our, our students get hands-on experience with tracking, GPS, LPS, so uh, both global and local positioning technology, uh, heart rate, um, athlete monitoring systems, so databases that allow you to collect large volume of information and make them usable. Um, we have uh, experience with uh, inertial measurements units, um, motion capture it is really infinite. Yeah, <coughs> a lot of stuff yeah. there. I might go to a question um, that's come in. How many students get to go on the study tour? All of them. All it, of the students. All of them. Get to go. So our study tour is an integral part of uh, our program. It's not an elective. So so long as they want to, uh, yeah. they can all, all come. And in the in the past, we we've had between our program and the program in sports business and, and integrity, we've had up, up to 40 people going at the same time. That'd be a great yeah. experience. Um, what would be the most common pathway for someone finishing the masters in terms of which job is most mm. likely for me to enter? The, the most likely is definitely as a sports scientist. Um, but we have students that have gone into strength and conditioning. 
Um, we have students that have ended up in an analysis, for example, uh, video analyst or uh, data analyst, and also high performance ma managers. Those seem to be the, the four jobs that are uh, the most common. Uh, sure. Um, will completing the graduate certificate be enough to get my foot in the door? Our graduate certificates are very young. They've only been offered for three or four years, so we don't have the data to um, say yes, de 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 is definitely enough. If we look at what happens in other countries, uh, for example, in Europe, uh, the master's degree are what is required. So when, when you go for a job and they want uh, postgraduate experience, masters are always looked more favorably. Um, but the graduate certificate are great for entering, yes. for students who may, are not entirely sure if they want to start with a master's degree. As an enter point, great. And, and in fact, most of our students who enter uh, as a graduate certificate, they end up then going into the master's. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, what would be the main difference between completing the grad cert versus mm. the master's with regards to entering the industry? You may have already partially answered that, I think. Uh, um, I think it's the prestige of, of a higher quali qu qualification. Sure. Uh, I guess the grad cert does offer that flexibility of, you know, if your situation changes, um, you can take that at that point, and then if you do want to come back and revisit it, you can. Y you can always do that. Absolutely. Um, that's all our questions. Um, so from there, it's probably time we wrap things up. So thank you for being part of our Graduate Online Information Series. Thank you, Fabio, for thank having you, a chat tonight. Um, for more information, please feel free to jump online and chat to our friendly staff or book in over, uh, over the phone for a consultation and, and have your questions answered. Um, you'll receive a link shortly. Coming up next is our graduate programs in sport business integrity. Thank you, and I hope you found this informative.